The new Common Core Georgia Performance Standards, or CCGPS, for mathematics has eight standards for mathematical practice. SMPs at each grade level, along with the CCGPS content standards. A brief description of the SMPs for each grade level can be found in the Georgia Department of Education's Teaching Guide, accessible through Learning Village. The SMPs are how to teach the Common Core, while the content standards are the what to teach. On the SMPs Look For document, SMP 1 and 6 are grouped together, since these should be seen every day in every lesson. The remaining six are listed in order. It is not expected that every behavior in the Look For's document is seen, but rather that these kinds of behaviors are prevalent. Standards 1 and 6 should be seen in every mathematics lesson every day. All six of the others should be evident in every teaching unit, but not necessarily every day. The standards for mathematical practice describe varieties of expertise that mathematics educators at all levels should seek to develop in their students. These practices rest on important processes and proficiencies with long-standing importance in mathematics education. The first of these are the NCTM process standards of problem solving, reasoning and proof, communication, representation, and connections. The second are the strands of mathematical proficiency specified in the National Research Council's report, Adding It Up. Adaptive reasoning, strategic competence, conceptual understanding, procedural fluency, and productive disposition. Number one, making sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Mathematically proficient students start by explaining to themselves the meanings of a problem and looking for entry points to its solution. They analyze givens, constraints, relationships, and goals. They make conjectures about the form and the meaning of the solution and plan a solution pathway rather than simply jumping into a solution attempt. They consider analogous problems and try special cases or simpler forms of the original problem in order to gain insight into its solution. They monitor and evaluate their progress and change course if necessary. Older students might, depending on the context of the problem, transform algebraic expressions or change the viewing window on a graphing calculator to get the information they need. Mathematically proficient students can explain correspondences between equations, verbal descriptions, tables and graphs, or draw diagrams of important features and relationships. They can also graph data and search for regularity or trends. Younger students might rely on using concrete objects or pictures to help conceptualize and solve a problem. Mathematically proficient students check their answers to problems using a different method, and they continually ask themselves, does this make sense? They can understand the approaches of others by solving complex problems and identifying correspondences between different approaches. Number six, attend to precision. Mathematically proficient students try to communicate precisely to others. They try to use clear definitions in discussion with others and in their own reasoning. They state the meaning of the symbols they choose, including the equal sign, consistently and appropriately. They are careful about specifying units of measure and labeling axes to clarify the correspondence with quantities in a problem. They calculate accurately and efficiently, express numerical answers with a degree of precision appropriate for the problem context. In elementary grades, students give carefully formulated explanations to each other. By the time they reach high school, they've learned to examine claims and make explicit use of definitions. Number two, reason abstractly and quantitatively. Mathematically proficient students make sense of quantities and their relationships in problem situations. They bring two complementary abilities to bear on problems involving quantitative relationships. The ability to decontextualize, to abstract a given situation and represent it symbolically, and manipulate the representing symbols as if they have a life of their own without necessarily attending to the reference. And the ability to contextualize, to pause as needed during the manipulation process in order to probe into the reference for the symbols involved. Quantitative reasoning entails habits of creating a coherent representation of the problem at hand, considering the units involved, attending to the meaning of quantities, not just how to compute them, and knowing and flexibly using different properties of operations and objects. Number three, construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. Mathematically proficient students understand and use stated assumptions, definitions, and previously established results in constructing arguments. They make conjectures and build a logical progression of statements to explore the truth of their conjectures. They are able to analyze situations by breaking them into cases and can recognize and use counterexamples. They justify their conclusions, communicate them to others, and respond to the arguments of others. They reason inductively about data, making plausible arguments to take into account the context from which the data arose. Mathematically proficient students are also able to compare the effectiveness of two plausible arguments, distinguish correct logic or reasoning from that which is flawed, and, if there is a flaw in the argument, explain what it is. Elementary students can construct arguments using concrete reference, such as objects, 
drawings, diagrams, and actions. Such arguments can make sense and be correct, even though they're not generalized or made formal until later grades. Later, students learn to demonstrate domains to which an argument applies. Students at all grades can listen and read arguments of others, decide whether they make sense, and ask useful questions to clarify or improve the arguments. Number four, model with mathematics. Mathematically proficient students can apply the mathematics they know to solve problems arising in everyday life, society, and the workplace. In early grades, this might be as simple as writing an addition equation to describe a situation. In middle grades, a student might apply proportional reasoning to plan a school event or analyze a problem in the community. By high school, a student might use geometry to solve a design problem or use a function to describe how one quantity of interest depends on another. Mathematically proficient students who can apply what they know are comfortable in making assumptions and approximations to simplify a complicated situation, realizing that these may need revision later. They are able to identify important quantities in a practical situation and map their relationships using tools as diagrams, two-way tables, graphs, flowcharts, and formulas. They can analyze those relationships mathematically to draw conclusions. They routinely interpret their mathematical results in the context of the situation and reflect on whether the results make sense, possibly improving the model if it has not served its purpose. Number five, use appropriate tools strategically. Mathematically proficient students consider the available tools when solving a mathematical problem. These tools might include pencil and paper, concrete models, a ruler, a protractor, a calculator, a spreadsheet, a computer algebra system, a statistical package, or dynamic geometry software. Proficient students are sufficiently familiar with tools appropriate to their grade or course to make sound decisions about when each of these tools might be helpful, recognizing both the insights to be gained and their limitations. For example, mathematically proficient high school students analyze graphs of functions and solutions generated from a graphing calculator. They detect possible errors by strategically using estimation or other mathematical knowledge. When making mathematical models, they know that technology can enable them to visualize the results by varying assumptions, exploring consequences, and comparing predictions with data. Mathematically proficient students at various grade levels are able to identify relevant external mathematical resources, such as digital content located on a website, and then use them to pose or solve problems. They are able to use technological tools to explore and deepen their understanding of the concepts. Number seven, look for and make use of structure. Mathematically proficient students look closely to discern a pattern or structure. Young students, for example, might notice that three and seven more is the same amount as seven and three more or they may sort a collection of shapes according to how many sides the shapes have. Later, students will see seven times eight equals the well-remembered seven times five plus seven times three in preparation for learning about the distributive property of multiplication across addition. In the expression x squared plus nine x plus 14, older students can see the 14 as two times seven and the nine as two plus seven. They recognize the significance of an existing line in a geometric figure and can use the strategy of drawing an auxiliary line for solving problems. They can also step back for an overview and shift perspective. They can see complicated things, such as some algebraic expressions, as single objects, or as being composed of several objects. For example, they can see five minus three times the quantity x minus y squared as five minus a positive number times the square, and use that to realize that its value cannot be more than five for any real numbers of x and y. Number eight. Look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. Mathematically proficient students notice if calculations are repeated and look for both general methods and for shortcuts. Upper elementary students might notice when dividing 25 by 11 that they are repeating the same calculations over and over again and conclude that they have a repeating decimal. By paying attention to the calculation of slope as they repeatedly check whether points on the line through the location 1, 2 with a slope of 3, middle school students might abstract the equation y minus 2 divided by x minus 1 equals 3. Noticing the regularity in the way terms cancel when expanding might lead them to the general formula for the sum of a geometric series. As they work to solve a problem, mathematically proficient students maintain oversight in the process while attending to the details. They continually evaluate the reasonableness of their intermediate results. The standards for mathematical practice describe ways in which developing student practitioners of the discipline of mathematics increasingly ought to engage in the subject matter as they grow in mathematical maturity and expertise throughout the elementary, middle, and high school years. The standards for mathematical content are a balanced combination of procedure and understanding. 
Expectations that begin with the word understand are often especially good opportunities to connect the practices to the content. Students who lack an understanding of a topic may rely heavily on procedures. Without a flexible base from which to work, they may be less likely to consider analogous problems, represent problems coherently, justify conclusions, apply the mathematics to practical situations, use technology mindfully to work with the mathematics, explain mathematics accurately to other students, step back for an overview, or deviate from a known procedure to find a shortcut. In short, a lack of understanding effectively prevents a student from engaging in the mathematical practices. In this respect, those content standards which set an expectation of understanding are potential points of intersection between the standards of mathematical practice and the standards for mathematical content. These points of intersection are intended to be weighted towards central and generative concepts in the school mathematics curriculum that most merit the time, resources, innovative energies, and focus necessary to qualitatively improve curriculum, instruction, assessment, professional development, and student achievement in mathematics. Please remember that the standards for mathematical practice vary from grade to grade. This information can be found in the frameworks located on Learning Village.